glad to have you back for the second part of this uh, two-part video clip on how to make a bar finite element. All right. If you remember where we were last time, we were looking at how to uh, transform coordinate systems. And this is one of these bookkeeping things you got to do. The element itself isn't necessarily going to goes isn't necessarily going to be horizontal. It's going to be at some angle because that, you know, trusses are like that. A truss that only had horizontal and vertical elements wouldn't be a truss. It wouldn't be stable. It would fall over. Okay, so we have to have diagonals in there. Remember, triangles are strong, rectangles not so much. Okay, so we have to have angles other than 0 and 90 degrees in there. So we have to have some way of accounting for that fact. All right, and what we want, the ultimate goal is to be able to make a bunch of elements in global coordinates so we can just add those up. Just like uh, you have to have compatible uh, dimensions, compatible units, in order to add things together, you also have to have them all in the same coordinate system. So that's what we're trying to do here. So what we had at the end of the last one is we related stuff in the uh, element coordinate system to, think to displacements in the global coordinate system. Remember, here's my, uh, here's my element. The element itself only knows what's going on in the element direction. Okay, that's, that's the local coordinate system. That's the element coordinate system. In order to, uh, to uh, work with this, though, we have to take those and break them into the components that are in the global coordinate system. My global coordinate system's like this, or like that. How's that? That's my x and y. All right, didn't expect to see that, did you? So there's what they look like. There's my element. Now, I can relate anything, I can relate global to uh, element coordinate systems at a point. That's what this does, okay? Changes in the, in the location of that point in global, changes in the location of that point in element coordinates, right? But I got two points there. I've got, I've got to do this twice. Well, how do I do that? The element itself only has two degrees of freedom. The element only can move along its axis at those two points. But in global coordinates, I really have four degrees of freedom. One, two, three, four. Well, okay, there's two here. To make four, all i got to do is, is write this down twice, and i just got to make sure I do the bookkeeping right. Well, I know this is going to show up twice, so let's, let's write that out. I think this pen's about ready to die on me. Let's try this one. That's better. Okay. Okay. So there's the displacement vector in element coordinates. Now I know that y1 and y2 are going to be zero because this thing doesn't have displacement in those uh, directions. But that's okay. I'm going to write those in there anyway because every other element does, and it's, we want to do this in the most general way possible. So the next thing I'm going to do is I've got to make a matrix that's going to relate. Eh, let's give me some room here. Let's see. That looks like that'll work. Remember, I want to do global coordinates over here. Okay, so that's what that side's going to look like. I just got to fill this in. Well, I'll write these terms in where I know I need them. those in where I need them, okay, relating x1e, y1e to, let's see, x1g, y1g. I'm relating the element coordinate system to the global coordinate system. Now, these two displacements here don't have any relationship to those at all. They're on opposite ends of the bar. So I get to write in zeros there. Since there's no mathematical relationship, just put zeros in. Same thing goes down here. And guess what goes down here? Just another copy of this. All right, there we go. That is what's called a transformation matrix, and we're eventually going to call this bad boy T. Okay, later on I'm going to call this T. Now, stands to reason now I have a uh, stiffness matrix for the element in that those kinds of coordinates, and I have a way of transforming these coordinates into them. I should be able to make a global stiffness matrix now, and that's what's going to happen. All right. What this is going to look like, yeah, I'll probably get rid of that now too. I need the room. Okay, now let's see here. Now, the 
what I'm going to do here is I, want, I need to write this. I need to write global forces equals K. Okay, F equals KX. That's, that's the uh, overall expression. That's like the spring equation. The problem is, I know what this is in element coordinates. I don't know what it is in global coordinates. If I could make that global coordinates, by the way, it has to be global too. All right, that would be great. Well, I know, let's see, I know this. Well, that's easy. That's, that, I've already written that down. If I could say, well, let's see, this means that, uh, I'm going to call this T, remember. That's it. Any kind of transformation matrix is called T. This is two degrees of freedom. In fact, I probably better erase this because I don't want I don't want you to confuse that with the transformation matrix I'm going to be using. The transformation matrix I'm going to be using is four by four, and that was two by two. Okay, so there's what I there's what I need. I want that. I have that. Okay, so how am I going to reconcile, turn that into that? Well, I'm going to use the transformation matrix that I have before. All right, let's see here. I know that, let's see, that is the transformation matrix. Okay, I know this is true. Really, this is what I'm writing. And what that transformation matrix does, it just breaks vectors down into their components. So it could be displacements or it could be forces. It works the same on both because they both have vector components. So that's what I'm doing there. Well, that's pretty good. And right here, I know that the relationship, here I can write uh, my transformation matrix. Okay, there we go. Well, I got one more step. Okay. Somehow I want to get just that vector on the left-hand side, and I want to get something times just that vector on the right-hand side. So I'm going to multiply through by the matrix inverse. If you're not familiar with matrix algebra, it's like dividing through by a number. It's the matrix equivalent of that. Okay. So what I'm going to wind up with is this. Okay. Maybe inverse. Okay. That's, that's, okay. that's what gets rid of that, that transformation matrix over there. That's it. This is what this looks like. And that stuff right there, that's my global stiffness matrix. That thing right there, that's the global stiffness matrix. So, that's it. Now there's one last step here. If you're, if you're maybe getting ahead of me a little bit, you can say, well, that's 4x4, four four, and that's 4x4, four four, four four. but the last time I looked at that, it was 2x2, two two, right? Here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to clear some space out here. The last time I wrote the element stiffness matrix, it looked like this. And it did. That's exactly what it looked like. And the reason it looked like that is because there was no displacements in the y directions at either end. Okay? Well, let's change that. Let's put those displacements in. All right? So we know they're 0, right? We'll let them be 0. That's not a problem. Okay. So I'll have 1, no, no y displacement, minus 1, no y displacement. No y displacement, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, and no y displacement. Okay, that's what it's going to look like taking into account the y displacements. Now it's got four degrees of freedom and it's compatible with that trans, uh, transformation matrix I just wrote out. Now, I don't think you want to watch me go through all this by hand. I'm going to trust that you can do that on your own.
and I'm just going to write out the answer. All right. I'm going to do one thing again because it takes too long to write it out. I'm going to say C is cosine theta and S equals sine theta. Is that okay? I just, I'm just some shorthand I'm going to use here. Call my global stiffness matrix is EA over L it's times all this stuff here. All right, ready? C squared CS minus C squared minus C. Now, if I do this right, this had better come out symmetric. One of the, the properties of uh, stiffness matrices is they're always symmetric. And you can tell that I'm reading, I'm reading this off this paper. It's pretty obvious I don't have this memorized. So let's just double check and make sure I wrote it down right. Those are the same, those are the same, yep. Let's see, those better be the same, those are, those are, those are. So if I made a mistake, it's at least I made a symmetric mistake. All right. So that's what the global stiffness matrix looks like for this bar element. And since there's a theta in here, it doesn't matter now what angle you've got it at. Now, this is a two degree of freedom. We're assuming this is what you make planar trusses out of. But the method for making a 3D truss and rotating this not about just theta, but maybe theta and phi, but rotating it about two different angles is exactly the same, okay? It's just some more degrees of freedom. So there you go. Now you've got a bar finite element that works at any angle. You can make all the trusses you want. You can make them as complicated as you want. And the nice part about this is the mathematics doesn't really change any. That's the beauty of the finite element method.